Okay, let's go ahead and go over this. So remember last week we talked about the triangle sum theorem where the triangle sum theorem states that if you add all three angles together, it's gonna equal a total of 180 degrees. So if we were to write an equation out for this, we would take x plus 29 plus 118 and the whole thing is supposed to be equal to 180. We can combine like terms first. So the set of like terms that we can actually combine together are these constants, these number terms. We can add 29 and 118 together and that's gonna give us a positive 147. So we now have x plus 147 is equal to 180. From there, we then would just solve by inverse operations. So instead of adding 147, we're gonna subtract 147 from both sides. And we'll get that X is going to be equal to 33 degrees. So your value for X for problem number one is 33. Okay. Same concept or idea for problem number two, except this time, one of these angles doesn't have anything written there, but it does have the box. Who can recall again, what does that little box mean? How many degrees is that box? 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write down that this is 90 degrees here, okay? Create my equation, so x plus that 90 degrees, which means it's a right triangle, plus the 24, and the whole thing is again set equal to how many degrees? 180. Every triangle, no matter what kind of triangle it is, they're all set equal to 180. We can combine these number terms together. 90 plus the 24 is going to come out to a positive 114. So I now have an equation of x plus 114 is equal to 180. And then I just do the inverse operation. Instead of adding, I'm going to subtract 114 from both sides and we'll get x by itself. That means x is gonna be equal to 66 degrees. Okay, for problem number three, it's just a little bit different because we don't have number values or, or degrees for every single one of them. Two of these have variable values to them, but it's still solved the exact same way. We're gonna take the first angle, 2x, we're gonna add it with the second angle, 6x, and we're gonna add it with the third angle, 60. And the whole thing is set equal to 180 degrees. This time, when we combine like terms, we don't have just plain numbers to combine, but we do have like terms with variables. We can combine the 2x and the 6x mm -hmm. together. What is 2x <laughs> plus 6x? 8x. 8x. So we get 8x plus 60 is equal to 180. What inverse operation do we need to do first? Subtract. We need to subtract the 60 from both sides first. By doing so, we are left with 8x is now equal to 120. Then our last step is to go ahead and divide by 8. What do we get when we take 120 and divide it by 8? 15, good. So we get x is equal to 15 degrees. All right, for our last one, again, it's the same process. We're going to take the first angle that we see, which is this x minus 49. So we have x minus 49 plus our second angle, that's 2x minus the 50 plus our third angle, which is a 36, and the whole thing is set equal to 180. We wanna combine our like terms first, so we're gonna focus on combining x plus the 2x. What is 1x plus 2x? 3x, good. Then we've got our number terms. We've got a negative 49. I know it's negative because it's got a minus sign in front of it negative 49. We're going to combine that with a negative 50 and then we're going to combine that with a positive 36. Okay, what do we get when we combine those together? Negative 63. Good. 
negative 63. So I put minus 63. So when I've combined that all together, I put minus 63. You shouldn't have your ca uh, computers opened up. Go ahead and close those, please, because you should be just writing this stuff down. The whole thing is then going to be set equal to 180. Our first inverse operation is to do what? Add 63. Good. We're going to add 63 to both sides first. That leaves us with 3x is now equal to 243. Then we can go ahead and divide both sides by 3. When we divide both sides by 3, we're going to get that x is going to be equal to 81 degrees. Any questions? Again, it's the same process over and over again. You are just solving an equation that you're creating from these triangles. All triangles always equal 180 degrees. Doesn't matter what type of triangle you have, they all equal 180. All right, let's go on to the next lesson Then we're gonna be talking about circles today. So you guys should have done a prodigy game assignment last week discussing the parts of a circle. So the parts of the circle that we discussed in the Prodigy game were radius and diameter. I think they might have asked maybe one or two questions about circumference, I don't remember. But I do know that they were asking lots about which one was radius and which one was diameter. So remember the radius, the radius is going to be your half length, that's what we kind of call it, it's the half length. It's the measurement that starts at the center of your circle and extends to any point on your circle. Okay, so I'm, right now, I'm just gonna draw it from the center to right here. But I could draw it anywhere. I could draw from the center to this point. I could draw from the center to this point. I could draw the center to this point. It does not matter where I draw it to. As long as I start at the center, and go to a point on the circle. That creates the radius. So go ahead and label that as the radius. The radius is the measurement that starts at the center and extends to a point on the circle. The diameter, the diameter is the longest measurement inside of your circle. The longest measurement that is inside of the circle. It, spans from one point on the circle, goes to the center, and then goes directly across it to the opposite side. Okay, so I could start here, go directly through my center, and extend all the way to the opposite side. That measurement is going to be called my diameter. Now if you notice down here, I have a couple of little equations that the diameter, D, can be found by taking the radius and doubling it. If you double the radius, that gives you your diameter. Same thing that if you wanted to find the radius, you could take the diameter and divide it by two. You could take your diameter, divide it by two, and that would give you the radius. The radius is half the diameter. The diameter is twice the size of the radius. Okay, and then we have this last measurement that we talk about, the circumference. You guys know this measurement for other shapes as perimeter, the distance around the shape. Well, when it's a circle, we call it the circumference. Because the te technical definition for perimeter is when you add all the sides together. Does a circle have sides? No, a circle doesn't have sides. Okay, so a circle is not a polygon, so it does not have a perimeter. So we call it circumference. Okay, and then there's one little thing that I didn't write down here. I want to write it just in case for you guys. This value, who knows what we call this? Anybody know? Pi. This symbol is called pi. Okay, P-I, it's a Greek value or a Greek letter, and essentially it is the value 3.14. That's what it equals, 3.14, and pi is used whenever there is a circle involved, whether it's a circle or a semicircle. If it is a circular value, the value of pi is included in the formulas for circumference, the distance around it, and area, what we can shade it. 
Okay, so here are our two formulas that I just mentioned. Circumference is found by taking the diameter and multiplying it by pi. Taking your diameter's measurement and multiplying it by pi. Area is found by taking the radius, squaring it, and multiplying by pi. Right below r squared, I want you to write down that this is the same thing as just saying r times r. r squared is the exact same thing as saying r times r, and then of course then we would multiply by pi. Okay, so if you don't remember r squared, at least remember r times r. r times r is not the same thing as r times 2. r times 2 would give you your diameter. r times r gives you r squared, okay? So we're just going to go over a couple of really quick examples. So for these two circles, I want to find the circumference. And then for these two circles off to the right, I'm going to find the area. So if I'm finding circumference, again, the value that I need is the diameter. I need to know the diameter's measurement. Here, I am given my diameter's measurement. My diameter is equal to 20. So in my formula, I'm going to take 20 and I'm going to multiply it by pi. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to take the diameter and multiply it by pi. So I'm going to take 20 and multiply it by 3.14. That's going to come out for my air, or sorry, for my circumference. So this is the value for circumference. Circumference is found by taking diameter times pi. My circumference is going to come out to 62.8, and that is inches. 62.8 inches. Now, for the second example, did they give me the diameter or the radius? Radius. They gave me the radius. But for circumference, what value do I need? I need diameter. So if they give me the radius, I can change that. I can change that into diameter. Remember, how do we change a radius into diameter? Multiply it by 2. Diameter is found by taking the radius and multiplying it by 2. So if I just take the radius and multiply it by 2, that'll give me my diameter. So what is the diameter? 18. The diameter is 18 yards. Now I can take that information and find the circumference. Circumference is found by taking my diameter and multiplying it by pi. Circumference is found by taking the diameter, which is thir or the 18, and multiplying it by 3.14. Okay, that's going to give us 56.52, and that is yards. So we found our circumference for these two. Now let's go ahead and go back to the other side. We're going to find area. So circumference, like I said, was diameter times pi. Area, you need the radius. For area, you must have the radius value. So for our first example, we already stated before that this was the diameter, that diameter was equal to 20. So how can I convert the diameter into the radius. What do I need to do to change it into the radius? Division, right. And what are we going to divide it by? Two. Two. So to find the radius, we're going to take the 20 and we're going to divide it by 2 and that means the radius is going to be equal to 10 inches. So the radius is equal to 10. R is equal to 10. So now when we plug it in for our formula for area, area is found by taking the radius and squaring it, or radius times radius. So 10 to the second power, and then we're going to multiply it by pi. What's 10 squared, or 10 times 10, going to give us, guys? 100. So we're going to do 100 times 3.14. 
And when we do 100 times 3.14, that gives us our area. So area is going to be equal to 314 inches. And since it's area, area is always squared. So you're going to put a little 2 in the corner by the inches. So 314 squared inches or inches squared. For the second example, again, they gave us the radius already. So we already know that the radius is equal to 9 yards. R is equal to 9. So we're just going to plug it into our formula. You plug it in and work it out. So you're going to take the radius, 9, and square it. And then you're going to multiply that by pi. What is 9 squared or 9 times 9? Nope, that's 9 times 2. 18 would be 9 times 2. 81. We want 81. 9 times 9 is 81. So we're going to do 81 times pi, which is 3.14. Guys, do not use the pi button. I know that on our calculators we have a button that is labeled pi. Don't use that. Just use 3.14. You want to use 3.14 because that's going to give you your best estimating value. So when they round them, when they round it, you want to use that value of 3.14. That's going to come out to 254.34, and that is yards squared. Yards squared. Okay. So these are examples of what to do, how to solve for circumference when you're given diameter, how to solve for it when you're given the radius, how to solve for area when you're given diameter, how to solve for area when you're given radius. What I want you to do is on the next couple of problems, you're going to be filling in a table of, or, or a, a questioning of information. So here for the very first problem, we want to find the area of the circle. So what are we trying to find? Area. So I want to write that down. I'm trying to find area. What is the formula that we need to use? So you're going to write down what the formula is. What's the formula for area? Radius squared times pi. Radius squared times pi. So what do we need to know? What piece of information do we need to find here? from the formula. Do we need radius or diameter? Radius. We need to know what the radius is. Now based off of the problem, do we know what the radius is from here? Does, do they tell us the radius? Yes or no? No. What did they tell us here? The diameter. So how do we find the radius? How do we turn diameter into radius? We divide it. We divide it by 2. So what's 5 divided by 2? 2.5. So there's the radius. Radius is going to be equal to 2.5. So you're just answering each of these questions little by little. Now all we have to do is substitute it into our formula. So our formula was area equals r squared times pi, so we're going to replace the r with a 2.5. So we're going to do 2.5 squared, and then we're going to multiply that by 3.14. We have to do 2.5 squared first before we can multiply. You have to do 2.5 times the 2.5. That comes out to 6.25 then you can multiply it by 3.14. Okay, so our area is 19.625, and that's centimeters squared. You're going to do this whole thing. Answer each of the questions. Tell me whether we're finding area or circumference. What is the formula for the area or the circumference? What piece of information do you need to know then? Are you needing to know the radius or do you need to know the diameter? Does the diagram give us the radius or the diameter that we need? If it does, tell us what it is. If it does not, tell us how to find it and what it will equal. Then you substitute it back into the problem to solve. 
Okay, do that for problems two, three, and four. All right, let's go ahead and go over this. For problem number two, finding the circumference of the circle. So what are we trying to find? Circumference. We are trying to find the circumference. What is the formula for circumference? Diameter times pi. Good. So we're going to take the diameter and we're going to multiply it by pi. Okay, so what piece of information did we need to know? We need to know the diameter. Do we know the diameter? Is that given to us? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So this measurement is the diameter. So that means yes, diameter is going to be equal to 5. We do not need to solve for it. Diameter is going to be equal to 5. So now all we have to do is substitute it back into our formula. So our formula being circumference equals diameter times pi. We're going to replace diameter with a 5. And we're going to replace pi with 3.14. So we're just going to do 5 times 3.14. And that's going to give us our circumference equaling 15.7. And that's centimeters. 15.7 centimeters. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing again. Same thing again for problem number three, but a different circle. Okay, what are we trying to solve for with problem number three? The area, right? It says find the area. That's what we need to solve for. Find our area. So the formula is radius squared times pi. That means we need to know what the radius is going to be. In this diagram, does it give us the radius? Yes or no? Yes, it gives us the radius. Radius is equal to eight, so we don't have to solve for the radius. It already gives it to us. Already gives us that piece of information. The radius is eight. So now we can plug it into our formula. Our formula is area equals r squared times pi Instead of r, we're going to replace it with 8. So we're going to do 8 squared times 3.14. What is 8 squared or 8 times 8? 64. So we're going to do 64 times 3.14, and that's going to give us the area. So our area is equal to 200.96, and that's meters squared. 200.96. Okay, and then for the last one, the last question is asking us to solve for circumference. The formula for circumference is diameter times pi. So we need to know what the diameter is in order for us to be able to solve for it. No, they do not give us the diameter. So we need to solve for it. So we're going to take the radius and we're going to multiply it by 2. We're going to do 2 times 8, which is going to come out to 16. That's our diameter. Our diameter is going to be equal to 16 because we have to double the radius. Now we can plug it into our formula. We can do circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. So instead of diameter, we're going to replace that with a 16, and we're going to multiply 16 times 3.14, and that's going to be 50.24, and that's meters. Okay? So you guys have online in Google Classroom, you have a Delta Math assignment. You've got plenty of time to be able to work on it and complete it in class. Anybody who completes it in class is going to get 10 bonus points of extra credit. You complete it in class time today, it'll go in as a 110 instead of a 100.